Hi there. Today I'm going to do a short video on how I think about converting stubs of notes into something that's a little bit more comprehensive and provide a better overview of uh, an idea or a concept. Um, I'm going to be using something called Obsidian to work with my permanent notes. Now other people use other software, Rome Research is a big one, uh, that's quite expensive. Um, if you want something that's a little bit more open source uh, like, then you can try LogSeq. Um, but I use something called Obsidian. So to start with, you might want to go to obsidian.md and download the, um, the latest version of Obsidian. This says get Obsidian for Linux, but if you're running Windows or Mac, then you'll be able to download those. There will be a mobile app coming soon. At the moment, it's in private beta. Uh, but you'll be able to download that at some point relatively soon. Now, Obsidian isn't open source, and so a lot of people do feel that that's a negative uh, point against it. Uh, but one of the great things about Obsidian is that it keeps all of your notes in plain text in the Markdown format. So you get to do really interesting and useful things with your notes, like creating links between the notes, um, without having to rely on a... Um, uh, proprietary format for keeping your data. So you can always get your data out of Obsidian even if they decide at some point to start charging for it. It is a free uh, app, they are paid for services, um, but you can do almost everything that you need to uh, with the free version. So once you've downloaded Obsidian and installed it, <clears throat> you run it and you're going to see something that looks a little bit like this. Well actually it's, it's going to be empty. Um, I've got two notes open at the moment. The one is a permanent note here on the left um, and that's my overview of permanent notes. And just looking at it, I can see that there's probably some editing that I need to do um, because the note is getting a little bit big, so it's no longer atomic. So one of the things about permanent notes is that they should be um, quite small and contain relatively discrete ideas. So um, this is starting to get to a point where there's a lot more information in here than you, you would typically have in, in a, an atomic note. Anyway, <clears throat> Permanent notes are notes that I take using my own words that reflect some part of my knowledge on a topic. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this in, in detail. Um, I'm going to do a deep dive into the way that I think about permanent notes at some point in the future, but that's not for, for today. Um, one of the things that I highlighted as part of this short presentation is that if you're going to take notes on something, you might as well treat them as important. And so I know that in the past I've treated notes as something supplementary. Um, you know, the kind of thing that you scribble onto a piece of paper and you'll get around to doing something with it at some point. And the whole concept of permanent notes is that it flips that around. Um, it says that every note that you take should be a progression towards something important, something that matters. Um, the goal of having a system of permanent notes is not to take better notes, but to develop better thinking. And I think that's also a really important point. There's no point in having a you know, really comprehensive set of notes that you never ever use or ever refer to. Um, and the last point is that permanent notes need not be complete. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today. Um, how we move notes from a uh, what I call a stub to something that's a little bit more comprehensive and um, uh, useful. Um, but always with the understanding that these notes should never be complete because they're always going to be um, adapting as your understanding um, of, of the world changes, of your of the topic changes, but also as you are, are better able to relate notes and link them to each other. So I'm going to close this now. <clears throat> a little while ago I was doing a video and I wanted to refer to an argument that uh, Daniel Dennett had made in, in one of his books. I wasn't really sure where he had made that argument. And I did some searching through my, um, uh, my permanent note repository. And eventually I found this. The title of the note is Critical Commentary, which isn't particularly useful. But if I look at the heading of the blog post that I took this from, you can see that that's where I got that from. But why it took me a long time to find it is because that isn't particularly useful. So what I want to do today is just very briefly take you through the way I was thinking when I created um, the expansion of this note. And I'm just going to open it. And <clears throat> this is what the note eventually ended up looking at, this point on the right here. So I started with this on the left, and then um, it became on the right. So uh, what I originally did was I captured this URL of, of where I got this list from, this list of, uh, they call it Dennett's rules for, for um, responding to an opinion that you disagree with. And if we look at 
this post. This is from the Farnham Street blog. Um, you can see this is where I got, got it from. So I basically just copied and pasted this information and I dumped it here into this note. But when I came back here, I saw that this is really referring to this book, Intuition Pumps and Other Tools for Thinking by Dan Dennett. So I don't really want to reference this blog post as the source for, for this point. So what I need to do is I need to go to um, Open Library, find the entry for Intuition Pumps and Other Tools for Thinking. And what I do is I add that to my Zotero library, which I'm just going to open. I've already put this information into Zotero. Um, if you've never used Zotero, you might want to go to zotero.org, download it and install it. Um, you also install the browser connector, which uh, adds this little icon into your browser. And when you click that, you can save this information um, into the note, I mean into Zotero. So if I look at Zotero and I look for Dennett, you'll see that I already have intuition pumps and other tools for thinking included in my library. So what happens when I go here is that I add that as a reference to the note. I've also changed the title of the note, responding to someone you disagree with, because that's really what this is about. And I found out a little bit later that these are informally known as Dennett's Rules. If I go back to this post that I originally looked at, there's not a whole lot here that is actually unique to this post. This is just one long quote that's pulled out of Dennett's book. So right there, I can see that this post isn't actually very useful. I also found this Brain Pickings article, um, How to Criticize with Kindness, and it provides a little bit more information. I think Brain Pickings is really good for relating concepts to other concepts. Um, and so this whole um, opening part is uh, possibly useful if I wanted to connect my note to, to something else. But when we get here, we see that all of this part of the note is basically also just taken from Dennett's book, Intuition Pumps. Uh, what's also interesting is that they, uh, this person refers to Anatole Rappaport, um, uh, not this person, this is uh, Maria Popova's site. She refers to Anatole Rappaport, as does uh, Shane Parrish in, um, uh, does he? Yes. Shane Parrish refers to the same person, and that's both because they, uh, Popova and Parrish are basically just pulling this straight out of Dennett's book. So I don't think there's a whole lot that's worth capturing from this post either. The other thing that's worth noting is that um, Popova refers to Susan Sontag's three steps for refuting any argument, and so does um, Parrish. So I'm not sure who's copying who, um, because neither of them put a date onto their posts. All right, so there's nothing really that's worth noting in there. I did find this other post on um, Rappaport's Rules at the Rational Wiki, which I think is a great website. And this provides a little bit more background, but again, it's just pulling information straight from Dennett's book. So I can see that Dennett is the main source of information. I have included that Rational Wiki here because I did pull out some other information. Um, the aim of uh, Dennett's rules or Rappaport's rules, depending on, on who you're looking at, the aim of it is to avoid straw man representations. And if you look at my permanent notes, I've linked to that because I know that a straw man argument is something that I do want to build a note on, but I haven't yet created that note yet. And uh, the other thing worth noting is that um, Dennett's rules, this list over here, is basically his reformulation of an original suggestion by Anatole Rappaport. And that's why it can be called Dennett's Rules or Rappaport's Rules. Um, this is very similar. This framework is very similar to an, uh, a form of argument called Steel Manning. Again, I haven't created that note yet, but I've created the link to the notes because I know that this is something that I'm going to want to explore in a little bit more detail. I've included these quotes, direct quotes from Dennett's book, just to make it very clear what is uh, what are my words, what are Dennett's words. I've added these tags here. The way that I use tags in my permanent notes um, is not to create a, um, a, a set of very discrete descriptors of the article. It's really using tags as a way to categorize the, the notes that I'm working on. So this is about argument. It's about personal development. I want to think um, more carefully about the way that I argue and disagree with people. And it's about the, um, uh, the knowledge domain of logic. 
I've also added a list of related posts. You can see here's argument. So I do have some information on um, argument. I do have some information on emotional versus rational arguments. I haven't yet created notes on scout and soldier mindsets. Uh, that's uh, from a new book by Julia Gallif called Scout Mindset. And I haven't yet created a note on testing your arguments. But I know that these are things that are important to me and which I'm going to want to expand at some point. I've got my references. And I haven't yet created the flashcards that I'm going to use uh, to help me remember some of the information in this note. So that's it. Um, that's basically a very rough um, approach to taking a stub of a note, which basically was just a, a dump of content. When I came across it at some point, I thought this is interesting, maybe useful. I'll dump it into my permanent notes and I'll get around to expanding it a little bit later. And uh, what I've done now is I've, I've taken this note here on the left called critical commentary, and I've uh, expanded it and created something that's way more useful and relevant for my, uh, for my needs. So that's it. Um, very quick post today. Um, I hope that you found this useful. Um, if you have, then uh, I'd really like to hear from you. So maybe add a comment. Uh, if you have a different way of working with permanent notes or a different way of thinking about your own note-taking system, I'd really love to hear about it. I'm always interested to find out what other people are working on and how I can improve my own practice. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel if you think that this is useful and you'd like to know when I release other videos. Um, and you can share it on social media if you think that this might be more broadly useful. All right. Thanks very much. Bye.